Hey everyone, welcome back. For this video, I'm gonna be replacing my old style thermostat here with a new smart thermostat. This is an Echo B3 Lite, and the reason I'm gonna be using this is that they're a lot more energy efficient. Now I'm gonna be replacing all the thermostats in my house, which I have four of them, with Echo Bs. One of the really nice things about these is they can reduce your energy costs by up to around 20 to 25 percent. They also are smart capable, so they can talk to you, your Alexas, your Google, your Apple Home, if you're into that stuff. And because they talk to the Wi-Fi, they can do a lot of other features as well, along as talking to smart sensors. So if you have cold or hot spots in your house, you can install a sensor in one of those rooms and then it can talk to that and allow it to determine like, hey, this room is you know three degrees cooler than the area at the thermostat, so I need you to turn on the heat at this point. So you can maintain a nice balance throughout the home. And they also are extremely good at being able to detect when your energy costs are high or low. So they will cool the house down when energy costs are lower or you know, start the heat when the energy costs is low as well so that they try to save you more money. So I'm gonna be doing all the thermostats and I'm gonna show you the process to do this. Okay, so your first step is to determine which unit you're gonna be working with. So the thermostat that you're gonna be replacing, if you have more than one thermostat in your home, you need to go identify which uh, furnace it actually controls. In this case, my upstairs thermostat works with my uh, furnace that's in my highest attic above me in the actual upstairs attic space. So I've already identified that and I'm going to turn this one off here first. All right, the thermostat is off. And then you've got two choices from here. You can go um, unplug it or turn off the power at the source up with the furnace or you can turn it off at your breaker. I'm gonna do mine at the actual furnace. So we need to go upstairs. All right, so let me show you the top attic. Okay, so despite this being the hardest to access of all of my attic spaces, this is actually the cleanest and nicest of all my attic spaces. Go figure. So here's my furnace up here, and all I need to do from here is to unplug it here from this outlet. And that's it. No more power to my furnace. Now I need to go back downstairs and remove the thermostat from the wall, and we have to look at the wiring that we're dealing with. Okay, now that my furnace is off, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the thermostat from the wall. Simple as that. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and look at the actual wiring of the system. Now beforehand, we need to check for a couple of warning signs. So we need to see if there's one that says L1 or L2, a high voltage, or if it says 110 VAC, 120 VAC, or 240 VAC, which none of these do. That's good, we can continue on with the installation. If you had any of those warning symbols, you can't use the Echo B, you're gonna to have to call for a professional installer. All right, so next, we're gonna look at the actual wiring we have in here. We have a white wire, we have our green, we have our yellow, and then we have the one red. If you had multiple greens, that's also an issue. In this case, our only problem here is that with the one red, I have to install a power device upstairs in the furnace. Okay, so my main issue is that I do not have a wire coming into the C right here. If I had that, then I could do a direct plug and play with the new Echo B. What I need to do now is I need to go upstairs and take this power extender kit that comes with the Echo B and I have to plug it into my furnace to be able to make this system work. So back upstairs we go. Okay, so I've removed the panel to access my electrical control panel on the furnace. First thing I needed to do was identify my actual thermostat wires, which is this brown cable here. And you can see I've got a yellow wire, a green, a white, and I have a red. Now things are a little bit different on this one I've got three wires going to the actual control panel hookups right here. I got five terminals right there. And I've got my red wire, instead of going to the R terminal, it is tied into a black wire here. This goes to a safety switch, which then ties into another safety switch. And then what you'll see is I have a thicker yellow wire, which goes to my R terminal. This is still gonna be my R, my red wire for this purpose. And just because this is tied into the terminals, I don't need to use this. Correction, sorry, it's not tied into terminals, but it is tied in safety switches and it's doing its job. So I'm just gonna be using this yellow. So I am going to label this as my new R in this circumstance. Now what I need to do is I need to undo my R terminal, my G, my Y, and my W. So I'm gonna be undoing those three corresponding colors and my new red, and they're all gonna be plugged into here. 
and then I will take the other end and plug the corresponding colors into their corresponding terminals. Okay, so I also have another cable which is running a white and a red to two different terminals on here. I'm going to ignore that. I just need to make sure that when I hook everything back up, these two cables still go back to their corresponding terminals. I'm actually gonna start with my thick yellow one, which is my red, and I'm going to remove that. Label is my new red, and then go ahead and plug it in and start with that. So this kit actually comes with a nice little peel off sticker thing, and I'm going to go ahead and peel off the R and label this wire my red. Okay, with my R wire installed and labeled, I'm gonna go ahead and just continue down the line here. So my next one's gonna be the green wire. For these, I'm not gonna label them because they're straightforward. The color matches the corresponding terminal. Make sure once you get it in, give it a nice little tug and make sure it's fully secure. And one more. Okay, I'm actually gonna go back and redo my red. You can see how all the other terminals, they've basically fully compressed here on top. And the red one is not, even though it's not coming out, I just don't feel like it's fully seed all the way. So I'm just gonna redo that one real quick. That completes this side of the pack. I need to take all of the other wires on the other end and plug them into their corresponding terminals. Now the back side of the pack comes with a very strong magnet so that you can attach it to the inside of your furnace. The Echo B that I did yesterday, all the terminals were on the outside of the furnace. So I simply attached it right next to it on, the, on a panel on the outside. But for this one, since everything's internal, I'm just gonna attach it right here on the inside. And now I can easily have it held out of the way while I run my wires to their corresponding terminals. Okay, so you may notice I have five wires, but I only had four that plugged into the bottom. That's because your fifth one is your C wire, which is the one we didn't have at the thermostat, which is the reason why we're up here to do this. So you plug the four wires into the one side of the PEC, and then you get five wires out, which allows your power extender. And now you just take the C wire and you screw it into your last terminal, which is your C terminal. And make sure all of your connections are getting secure. And I still have my two that were coming from this white cable and they're still in their corresponding terminals, so everything's good. I'm gonna double check my red again and it's still in there. And now I'm just gonna put all my cables back in, put my panel back on. Okay, so now that we're done with the furnace side of things, we're back in the thermostat and I'm going to unscrew the terminals so I can pull out all the wires. Now I'm going to unscrew the screws, screw, securing the back plate to the wall. Now, because my area is so large here that the back plate is ripped the paint off, I'm going to use the new back plate that comes with my device to help cover it up. And of course, it's not gonna cover everything, so this is something I'm gonna have to come back and do touch up work later on when I paint. But you don't have to use this if you don't want to. I'm gonna use them. I think it makes the whole unit look better, but if you don't like how it looks, you can leave it out. It's not necessary to install. Okay, so if you choose to use the back plate, then I would suggest putting on the terminal plate as well so that you have the built-in level for it so that you can make sure everything is nice and level before you do your marks and drill your holes for your back plate. Okay, with my back plate and terminal plate secured to the wall, I've also gone ahead and labeled my wires using the stickers provided. The wiring guide will show you what to do, but in this case, your red wire will be labeled RC, your green wire will be labeled C, your yellow wire will be labeled PEC, and your white wire will just stay white, and they're gonna go to their corresponding locations. In this case, the white wire will go to W1. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach all my wires to their corresponding terminals, and they just plug directly into the back of those terminals, and make sure any of the excess wire is either tucked back in the wall or pushed out of the way. 
double check to make sure that they are fully secure and you're good to go. Okay, at this point I'm ready to attach my Echo B. So it's just gonna press on. Okay, now I need to go back up into the attic and plug the power back in. Okay, at this point everything is done. Echo Bay is started up and everything is good. You just need to go through your setup process, connect it to the internet, and then you can download the app that will control the devices and you can register your product on there and then name it so that if you have multiple systems in the house like I do, you can control it in the app and know which one you're gonna be controlling by adjusting temperature independently by using the app. Or of course you can just come to the actual device and control temperatures if you want to. So in this case, the biggest question you're gonna have right at the beginning is, I'm a homeowner or I'm an Echo B Pro. The Pro would only be selected if you had multiple green wires, which the instruction manual will explain. And in this case, we didn't have that, so it's just gonna be I'm a homeowner. And then you go through the rest. It's gonna detect what terminals that you have plugged wires into, and it's gonna show what it's seeing, and you're gonna verify if that's correct or not. Fahrenheit or Celsius preference furnace or boiler, in this case I have a furnace. I'm gonna have it control everything by the thermostat and not by the furnace. And then in this case, I'm gonna name this one upstairs. If you don't like any of the pre-selected names, you can also enter your own. And then I'm going to select the Wi-Fi network for setup. And I'm gonna go through the rest. But after this is pretty much just time zones and then selecting what temperatures you want it set for for heating and cooling. And then if you want to get more into it, the instruction manual will explain all of the other different features that this device has. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time on the DIY Grunt.